Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. This is VR Productions. And guess what? We are back. It's been a hot minute, but guess what? Let's get into it. So I want to talk to you guys about sound synthesis today. Sound synthesis. What is that? Well, let's get into it. We have additive synthesis and we have subtractive synthesis, right? Additive synthesis is you're adding waves of various frequencies and amplitudes to create complex waveforms. You're stacking them on top of each other. This gives it dynamics. Then there's subtractive frequency synthesis. This is where you have harmonics that are rich and you're using filters to remove harmonical dynamics. You're basically attenuating certain parts to shape the sound the way you want it to shape. So we have additive, which is you're adding frequencies to each other. And then this one where you're subtracting, you can even take away the frequency altogether, but a better idea would be just to filter out the frequencies you don't want to keep the result you do need. Subtractive synthesis with analog. Don and Dr. Robert were some of the great influences of this specifically. Let's dive in. Sound fundamentals. What is sound? We have pitch. No on a keyboard when you're going up, 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 up. Each note has a specific pitch frequency or rate it vibrates by. How the amplit now the amplitude itself. Amplitude, how loud, how loud, how loud are we getting overall? Is that lightly tapping and we're going bang, bang, bang to the sound of the keyboard? Timber, the sound quality, the harmonical content. Is it crappy sounding or does it sound clear, precise, and in your face? Presence type of video. So the pitch itself is controlled by an oscillator. The amplitude is controlled by the amplifier and the timber is controlled by the filter. So just keep that in mind when you're working with the synthesizers. So the oscillator, the sound source, the waveform, the sampled sound that you have taken. What are we looking at? Well, to get down in the nitty gritty, we're gonna look at the parameters, which is the waveform octave pitch tuning of their overall shape. What does the shape look like? Let's get into it. This is a basic waveform, a sine wave. This is traditionally used for low frequencies or like subs. I'm sure if you're a producer, you know what I'm talking about. Triangle waves. These are very edgy, more like a video game type of vibe. Square. These are more cutting edge, if you will. Very cutting edge, bold. They stick out. And these are also used permanently. Predominantly in video game music. Pulsing. Bum, 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 bum. It's almost like isochronic tones. You just you know a, a pulse, one after another, one after another, one after another, one after another, all that good stuff. Sawtooth. Zzz, 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 zzz. This one is like strip perfect for like dubstep type of video if you know what you're doing. But it really has its mark in EDM music. Sawtooth. And then my favorite one. White noise or noise or pink noise is how people go by, but white noise, the signature psh, sound. You all know. Anyways, frequencies plus minus, you can either add or subtract. Additive, subtractive, using filters of multiple types. Honestly, it's your your creativity is the only thing that's limiting you. So get crazy with it. So the parameters that you can adjust when it comes to EQs is the filter type, the slope, the cutoff, the resonance, and the key tracking. So just keep that in mind when you're making specific creative choices and decisions in your workflow. Now we're going to get into something more visual. Check this out. So we're looking at a low-pass filter at 0 dB until we hit the cutoff, the FC. The, and then we have the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is our range of human hearing, what we can hear. Low pass frequency takes away all the high frequency content. And guess what a high frequency pass filter does? You guessed it, takes away all the low frequency content. Low takes away the high and the highs take away the lows. So just bear that in mind when you're making choices. You will be using low pass frequencies a lot. And high-pass frequencies do have their place, 
but it just depends on how you're using it. Resonance for the filter. If you ever have a sound and you put a little peak on top of it, it's going to give it a little bit more presence, a little bit more shine, a little bit articulation to the sound you're working with. I've used it before and it's coming very handy in certain situations. So now we're going to get into the slopes of filters. What does it look like in real time? We have a 6 dB slope right here measured by the low pass filter. And we're going to go down. Check this out. 12 dB, 24 dB, 48 this is all the slope that you're going to get. And guess what? We're going to show you all together at once. Check this out. So we have the human, human hearing range of 20 hertz, 20 kilohertz. Zero dB hits. Then the filter slopes at 6 dB to the octave, 12 dB to the octave, 24 dB to the octave, and then 48. I generally use 48 to 24 because it has more control. But use your ears. I can't stress that enough because when you close your eyes and use your ears as you're passing the frequencies, you will hear the difference. Bandpass filter. Remove the highs, remove the lows, and guess what? You sound like you're talking into a telephone. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. The notch, band, reject. This is exact opposite of the filter, the, um, the bandpass frequency, which you sounds like you're in a telephone speaking on it on the way. This one, you're keeping the highs and you're keeping the lows, but you're just taking away all the mids. You're attenuating the mids. No mass for mids. So that gives its own color. I dare you check that one out. Anyways, you guys, hope you guys took something away from this. I am super passionate about frequencies and filters. I know I went through this pretty quickly, but I'm sure I gave you guys some form of inspiration. Anyways, you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. This is Veer Productions signing off.